All right, you guys, so we are over here in Homosassa, Florida. We got the whole family, we got Austin, and we met up with some pretty cool people. One of them is a guy named David Strickland, and he is a commercial crabber. He's lived in the Homosassa area for like uh, his whole entire life. What's up with the name on the, on the sign? Oh, this is our family. This is my cousin, Amingo Strickland, there and he's the owner. It's just impossible to walk into a store that sells tackle and not buy tackle. <laughs> and then, you know, if Mama's here, she's buying some kind of merch. It's cool, it's got old homosessa downside. Hey, you guys, I want y'all to see this. Honey, show them the shirt you're wearing. Ooh, looks good. Turn around, bam! <laughs> you can find that on DeerMeatForDinner.com. <laughs> Where the crabs at? Uh, in the water. <laughs> so what's your thoughts, Austin Crockerton? I have no idea. This place is beautiful, I know that. What is that, by the way? Uh, it's a cheese danish. You know you can't go out without that. Look at this, y'all. Wow. This reminds me of Outer Banks. All you Outer Banks fans, this looks like Outer Banks. Hey, are we in the Outer Banks here or what? Yeah, man. <laughs> Who's getting crazy in the back of the car? Not me, yeah. <laughs> Are you excited to go today or what? Oh, definitely. We're going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys, let me just formally introduce you. This right here is Mr. David Strickland. He's about a nine generation for How many generations? I'm seven. My kids are eight. Seven? seven generations right here in Homosassa, Florida. Commercial fisherman, lives off the land, raises a beautiful family. We've been keeping in touch for a little while now on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, me and Sarah were like, hey, let's load up the RV, go to Homosassa, have a little family vacation, and in the meantime, catch some crabs. Not many of you know this, but see that shirt he's wearing? It says, I got crabs. Well, years ago when I had my fish market, People would always call and say, hey, you got any crabs? And I'd say, yeah, I got crabs. And then they'd come buy them. Well, that's why I made the shirt. I got crabs. Alrighty, I'm at the wheel. So that means Robert's up at the bow. He's about to throw the net because we need bait for the traps. Watch out, girl. Look at this. Those are oysters. These are all living organisms. Now, like this one, see how it's closed or open? That one's open. Those are dead. But these that are closed, there's an oyster in there, and this filters the water. Each one of those oysters filters about 100 gallons of water a day. So it's just constantly filtering all day long. That's why if you get an oyster from really tainted water, chances are it's not gonna be good to eat. Is this a whale shark? Nah, these are just mullet. Big old black mullet. We got gold, boys. I'm all about learning, and right now, they've been using gizzard shad as bait. It's like the most common bait around. I have grown up using fresh mullet over in Jupiter. So what we did is we put a, a gizzard shad and a mullet in the trap with the GoPro. We're gonna drop it to the bottom, and when the crabs come, we're gonna see which one they eat first. Down, down, down it goes. Where it goes, no one knows. Well, as fate has it, we have found where it went, down to the bottom. Oh, look right over there to the left. There is a catfish, and here comes Mr. Blue Crab. He's closing in on the mullet, and he actually has a hankering for a big mouthful of guts. The guts are probably really tasty, and they're easy to get to. So why not take them? If you look over to the right-hand side up top, that's that gizzard shad. And it's just hanging out. 
Yeah. Our blue crab, he is just going to town on it. He's got pieces of guts going everywhere. And now for some reason, it's getting really, really muddy. Well, when it gets muddy, they obviously can't see that well. So they use those little whiskers that are on front of their face. You see how they're just like feeling and smelling and tasting? They know what's going on. Whoa! Something just happened. Something just happened. He reached up and nearly took a bite out of somebody. Well, he's back to eating his old mullet. And the gizzard shad is still getting no love. But what's unique is you can see another crab on the outside of the trap pulling the mullet towards him. So it's like a tug of war for a mullet head. Pretty weird situation. Well, all is good. Everyone's hanging out. Crabs are eating well. And the shad is getting no love. Oh my goodness. Here comes Big Daddy coming in for the kill. He's like, get the heck out of the way. So crab number one actually swings around to the backside. Crab number two is getting an absolute mouthful of guts, devouring that stuff. And if you look real closely, the old gizzard shad is still getting no love. But you see that white stuff floating along right there? That's just like fish particles floating by. And that's why little fish are always hanging out around crab traps, because they're eating the scraps that the crabs miss. Well, obviously, I feel like mullet is the best bait. But because they caught all these crabs using shad, uh, I feel like no matter what you put in that trap, as long as it's near the crabs, you're going to catch them. Look at all the crabs. As soon as he pulls in all the traps, he puts all the crabs in one box. Then once that box is full, he will stop and sort them out. Yep, she's a virgin. Okay, so oh, what, is, what is the V on here? You can see this V is in more of a, a pointed shape, straight up and down. That's a crab that's never bared eggs before. And this one has a round apron, which was an egg bearing crab. Now if she, we, we turn her loose because she's gonna make babies. Now if she's hard and solid on the bottom like this, no crunch, no paper, then she is probably on her last life cycle. She'll never produce again. That's the only reason we keep them. If they were to produce again, then we wouldn't keep them. But anything smaller that we think is gonna produce goes back in the water. You know it's cool when the local pastor shows up with a cooker and a whole bottle of propane. You wanna know something funny? This is who originally was watching my channel. He turned David Strickland on to it. Now we're all friends. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But uh, he went to Home Depot earlier and got this. Really nice. A lot of the, ow, that's hot. Let me show you how I do crabs. Pretty simple. That's white distilled vinegar. About that much, that should do. I mean, I like Everglades, but Old Bay is pretty good on crabs. We'll put a whole tub of it in there, just like that. Now, what we did there is we got our water right. Old Bay, vinegar, and water. We got corn, sweet corn, locally grown. Came straight from Walmart. Throw it in there, throw it all in there. Everybody puts potatoes in their crab oil, and no one eats them. Eat like one of them. You eat them? I do too, man. I'll eat that only potatoes. They're the potatoes. best. <laughs> what? They're the best. Potatoes only, man. Can't you tell? I eat a lot of starches. <laughs> Call me wrong. Call me wrong. <laughs> I never eat the potatoes. I always put them in there. I never eat them. Whenever I was a little kid, we would always go to Fiesta Key in the Florida Keys. We would stay in a little old uh, camper or in a efficiency. And then all the families, we would all get together and we would cook. It was called potluck. You know, somebody bring potato salad, somebody bring coleslaw. There'd be two or three types of fish and lobster cooked up. We didn't have a lot of money, but I guarantee you, we made memories that were worth millions. And now as a dad and a husband and a YouTuber, I love recreating that. I love living that life. And so that's what we're doing today. Rolling boil. That corn and the potatoes, they're doing the two-step in there right now. They're happy. There. Now 
Now, we're gonna put some seasoning right on top and let that percolate down. There you go. We in action. I love you. Okay, like, you. Here, Emma, all right on. Okay, you guys, so the table is here. The crabs are ready. And I'm gonna try my best not to burn myself. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this gathering, Lord. We thank you for this fellowship, Lord, and the new friends that we've met, God, and Robert and Sarah and his beautiful children, and Austin, his uh, girlfriend, God, we're so glad that they was able to be with us on this weekend. God, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless them, Lord, as this is a ministry to them, God. We ask, Lord, that you bless this food, the hands us prepared it. We ask all this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about, y'all. Got to be grateful. If you're not grateful, you're nothing. Do all of this to get what's inside. So I like... I want to taste this corn. Here you go. That's good. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, this corn is on point. Here. Now, Sarah's putting the girls to sleep inside. Everyone's happy, and that's all I've got for you tonight. I really hope you've enjoyed this because it has been a lot of fun to make, but that's all I got for you tonight. Take care, God bless, and we are gone. What's that? <laughs> yeah, I hit it.